first tonight, the families on the brink of losing their homes along part of the Norfolk coastline. Thirteen houses in the coastal village of Hemsby near Great Yarmouth were evacuated at the weekend amid fears they could be washed into the North Sea. Two are this evening hanging over the cliff edge. There are now calls for the government to step in and provide help. Well, our reporter Kate Prout's been in Hemsby throughout the day. Kate, uh, good evening. What's the situation there tonight? High tide is due here in just over two hours. It's another big one. It's three and a half metres nearly. We've also got a northeasterly wind coming off the sea, which is not ideal. And the feeling is that this house behind me and quite potentially many others just simply will not survive the night. Paul and Elizabeth Ray are collecting up their belongings and leaving their beloved Hemsby home after eight years. With their house teetering on the edge of the dunes, they can't stay here. And they don't want their possessions ending up on the beach or in the sea. I can get over this. You know, you've got to. I went and said, I've got to take another step along the line. And uh, I'm not the only one here. There's ten, 10 of my neighbours that are in, in the same position as me. So we've got to get this pulled together. To go keep the fingers crossed that the insurance people pay out for us. That's the thing I'm worried about. At the moment. Nothing else. I'm say, I can replace a home. I can, get a, I can get a home for me and my wife again. Any, anywhere, but that's an insurance thing I'm just worried about at the moment. From the beach, it's clear to see how precarious these houses are. Water pipes are still connected, reminding us that these were inhabited until the weekend. And to give you an idea of just how much land has disappeared in a few short days, this time last week, the cliffs started at the sea defences there. All of this has been swept away, a good six or seven metres, and the cliffs now reside just there. Don't go any further in this line here, where the door is. Yeah. Crews from the Hemsby lifeboat have been working around the clock to evacuate 11 of the 13 houses here and keep the area as safe as possible. We're hoping the government would now look at this and uh, get some sort of sea defence through here. You know, if it keeps on like this, you then got another row behind this. We're going to then have more uh, risk to life as well. A coastal review of Hemsby's due soon. The question of effective sea defences is one that many will be asking. I think now there's going to be an assessment as to how effective they've been and whether we need to do a little bit more. The gambons that are down there at the moment cost over £470,000. This council doesn't have that kind of money to spend, so we need national help with that. I think that nationally we have to decide whether we want to save Hemsby coastline or not. And if they don't, then they need to tell us and we need to put an action plan in to deal with it. Paul and Elizabeth are staying with family and now wait for the inevitable time when the sea claims their home. Well, Kate, back to you. And unfortunately, this is all too familiar for Hemsby, isn't it? Well, you probably remember the tidal surge of 2013. Well, Hemsby was one of the worst affected villages. Who can forget those images of yet more houses, yet more people's homes falling into the sea? Another tragic day for the village. I was here yesterday and I got chatting to the guy who built this house behind me in the 1960s as a holiday home. And he said that back then the sea was a good 300, 400 yards away from the house. And he had no idea that this day would happen, but sadly it looks like it might. Now, with all crises, it really draws people together. In Hemsby, volunteers from the lifeboat, from the Coast Guard have been working around the clock, barely sleeping. People have been offering hot meals and shelter for those who've been evacuated. And it really does bring out the best in people. There's a saying in Hemsby that a cliff fall like this is a once in a lifetime occurrence. It's happened here twice now in just four years. Indeed, Kate, thank you very much. Well, now comes the debate regarding who should finance any operation to protect the coastline and those residents living nearby. This was a reaction from Mark Johnson of the Environment Agency when asked who he felt was responsible. In terms of uh, who is responsible uh, as the operating authority, Great Yarmouth Borough Council is the operating authority for this particular stretch of coastline. We work really closely with uh, the local authority and it is our role in a more strategic context to uh, allocate funds where we, where we are able to. Do the, the councils actually understand that, I wonder? No, I think uh, the, the councils uh, have the responsibility under the Coast Protection ba Act dating back to uh, the, the late 1940s. So uh, that responsibility has always sat with the local authority. And you, you're convinced that they are aware of that responsibility? 
We work really, really closely with the staff from both Great Yarmouth Borough Council and all the neighbouring local authorities in both Norfolk, Suffolk and indeed Essex. So yes, they will be aware of the legislation that they work to and we obviously work to as well. So let's enlarge then on exactly what's happening at Hemsby and also beyond. Tell us about the strategy that you're adopting there. The strategy, uh, we, have, we have a shoreline management plan, one of 23 which uh, covers uh, all parts of the English coast and the policy for this particular stretch is actually for managed realignment but on the understanding that uh, in the short term measures will need to be taken. Coastal erosion is complex and there are no real easy solutions in a lot of locations. Uh, coastal management is expensive and we as the Environment Agency working together with uh, our partners have to make sure that any uh, taxpayers money that is being used um, any project will last and it will work and it has, to, has got to be a good value as well to the UK taxpayer. Let's end on the here and now then. And, and what do you see happening over the next days and weeks? Well, again, we will continue to work with Great Yarmouth Borough Council to see what we can do and support them in their measures to minimise the impacts to uh, both existing uh, families who've been affected and those other uh, residents of Hemsby. Mark Johnson from the Environment Agency, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Well, we put those comments to Great Yarmouth Borough Council, who criticised the Environment Agency for their claim that it isn't their responsibility to protect the shoreline. They've said the council does not have a statutory duty to protect land which is not in our ownership. However, we have permissive powers to undertake works on such land to protect coastal communities and properties. We have and continue to use these powers in the best interests of the communities and seeking to draw down as much funding as possible from the Environment Agency and other funders. Well, we might not be able to get completely to the bottom of who is responsible. We will keep trying, though, but we can tell you why it's happening. Or rather, Chris can. <laughs> so, basically, what we've got here in Norfolk is the coast is a very soft rock, or it's actually made of sediment. A lot of the, the coastline is, apart from a very small bit across the far north Norfolk coast. And what that means is, with these powerful waves, it just very, very quickly can be taken out by the, but the sediment, can just be eroded away very, very quickly and easily. Now, um, the biggest factor that affects coastal erosion here um, in Norfolk, or basically affects coast erosion in general, is basically the, the fact that we have the, the, the fetch of the wave, which is the distance the wave has travelled, and also the strength of the wind. Now, if you wind your mind back even maybe two, three weeks, where we had that beast from the east, the mm. keen easterly wind that was continually blowing that air off parts of um, Scandinavia. The winds are driving in, they're very strong as well, and that driving factor has led on to this erosion continually happening, powering those waves, and those destructive waves continue. Now, the biggest concern that we've got is not necessarily what we've got at the moment, it's the, over the future and how the future of, um, of climate change is going to interact, and with those strengthening waves continuing, you know, w what kind of erosion is going to continue, and uh, the rate of that is going to increase. Chris, thank you very much indeed for now. We'll see you later on in the programme. Thanks.